in lab, we do a lot of reactions in aqueous solutions, and a, a lot of the reactions we do can be categorized as a double replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, uh, you essentially have two ionic species and the ions swap. Uh, that's a little bit of an oversimplification, but it works in most of the cases. For example, let's, let's learn by example. If I have sodium chloride in an aqueous solution, and I pour it into a container that already has silver 1 nitrate in an aqueous solution, a visible reaction will take place, and what I will observe is I will observe a fine whitish precipitate forming at the bottom of the beaker. A precipitate is a solid that forms during the chemical reaction. So both of these are soluble, both of these dissolve in water, both of these are aqueous solutions, but mixing them causes a chemical reaction, in which case a solid forms, and that's my precipitate. The reaction that's happening is the swapping, if you will, of these two ions. The silver plus one ion hooks up with the chloride ion, the sodium plus one ion hooks up with the nitrate ion. Recall that when I'm in an aqueous, when I'm an ionic compound in an aqueous solution, if I take sodium chloride and I dissolve it in water, it literally is sodium ions and chloride ions floating around in the container. Those ions are all floating around. When I take a silver 1 nitrate solution and I dissolve it in water, I literally have silver ions that are aqueous and nitrate ions that are aqueous floating around in water. With all four of these ions floating around in my water solution, the reaction occurs because when silver ions and chloride ions are in the same container, they form the precipitate silver 1 chloride because it's not soluble. When these two ions see each other in solution, the attraction between the positive and negative ions is greater than the attractions of them and the waters that are around them that are keeping them dissolved, and so the solid precipitate forms. So silver chloride, silver 1 chloride, is one of the products in this reaction. Now the other ions that are floating around are my sodium ions and my nitrate ions, and I can write that as my other product, NaNO3, but the sodium ions and the nitrate ions are not going to form a precipitate. They're going to remain as ions in solution, and so I'll continue to write that aqueous. This first reaction, this top reaction, is called the reaction or the molecular reaction because it simply represents the molecular formulas or the formula units of each of these ionic compounds. In this second line, I've started what's called the ionic reaction or the ionic equation. In chemistry, we often interchange the word equation and reaction when we're referring to a chemical reaction. So this is the ionic equation. What I've done is I have taken the ionic species and I have split them up into the ions that they truly exist as in the aqueous solution. I've split the silver and the nitrate ions up because they truly are the ions in the aqueous solution. I don't split the silver chloride up since it's insoluble, since it forms a precipitate, insoluble, meaning it doesn't dissolve, watch your spelling, then I leave it together because that's how it appears in the beaker. It does not appear as ions floating around. It appears as a solid substance that will settle to the bottom. The sodium nitrate, however, does dissolve. It is soluble. And so I will see, I will represent it, I actually won't see these, as sodium plus one ions, and I've run out of room, so I'm taking it down here, and nitrate ions. And the nitrate ions are minus one. This second reaction, the ionic equation, has taken everyone who is aqueous in the top reaction and split him up into his ions. This is balanced already. The top reaction is balanced. The second reaction is balanced. We'll do one that's a little harder to balance in a second. There's a third way to represent this top reaction, and that is in something called the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation um, is the reaction that is left over after looking at the ionic equation and canceling 
any species that shows up on the left and the right side of the arrow exactly the same. In other words, the net ionic equation writes only the, thing, the species that actually change during the reaction. Remember that my arrow is indicating that something is changing, and so I want to look from the left to the right, and I only want to pick out what's actually changing. You may notice that the sodium aqueous ion isn't actually changing. It is sodium plus one aqueous on both sides. So I'm not going to write that in my net ionic equation. You'll notice that the chloride ion is changing. It's becoming part of the silver one chloride on the product side. So I am going to write the chloride ion, and I'm going to write the silver chloride because that's, that's where the chloride ion is. The silver ion is changing. He's becoming part of the silver chloride. But the nitrate ion does not change as the reaction proceeds. He looks exactly the same over here, so I'm not going to write the nitrate ion. I'm not going to write the sodium ion. So my net ionic equation is simply Cl minus aqueous plus Ag plus aqueous yields AgCl solid. And this is my net ionic equation, my net ionic reaction, and it's still balanced. I could write these ions in either order. That part doesn't matter. This type of reaction is called a double replacement reaction. Um, a double replacement reaction is also sometimes referred to as a metathesis reaction. And essentially what happens in a double replacement reaction is the ions swap places. So you get two replacements made, they're replacing each other, that sort of thing. And, and it's a common reaction that we see in, in the laboratory, although they're not all double replacement reactions. It is a common one. 